Hello, everybody. What's up, Dan Coy? Welcome to Send Out Podcast number 18. Today, I'm going to be doing a reading, reaction, and analysis of SIP number 11. I wasn't able to schedule a podcast with the writers of the Ambassador Program SIP. They, I haven't seen them respond for uh, over a week now, I think. So I'm going to do, now that it's live for vote, I'm going to do a reading of it. I'm going to analyze it just like I did SIP 7 and 8 back in, which one was that? Podcast number... Five. Back in San Sandow 5, we did a review of SIP 7 and 8. They too were were SIP SIPs from the Sandbox team, the landowners and the Parasity Jam. So I'm gonna be doing the same thing here, and we will get after that momentarily. Okay, so today's scope of the talk is review and analysis, as I mentioned, and the disclaimer is that I do not represent the Sandbox Game or the Sandbox Foundation, which is the DAO. We are not your financial or legal, I am not your financial or legal advisor, nothing I say is to be taken as financial or legal advice. So introduction, I am Lanzer. I am the founder and president of the Meta Worlds team. We are a team of of crypto enthusiasts and gamers. And right now, uh, we have land that we've been publishing experiences to, Floor Droppers, which placed seventh in Builders Challenge One. It hasn't placed. I think it's top five hundred or something for Builders Challenge Two. We've been pretty much spending most of our our time and effort and energy on the DAO as of late. So I let the Builders Challenge 2 go and so that we could focus on the DAO. We are we have a, a deep background in things like contract negotiation, contract writing, program management. So the DAO fits perfect in that intersection between business, community, and gaming. And I am absolutely thrilled. I, I'm excited to be doing this stuff like this, because I think the DAO represents all the sort of things that I love and that I want to pursue. And I think I mentioned my name's Lanzer. I've been in the sandbox since mid-season one. So all the alpha season passes and number of avatars. I, I love my World of Women avatar. Run around with her all the time in the sandbox. And Rabbids, those are my two favorite. So been in ever since then been slowly ramping up as i saw more the sandbox reach more and more gates which was uh, expanding its partnership seeing how involved seb and his team was just traveling to every conference i could see the sandbox was there and and then the continued development on the sandbox game and it's just been just been nothing but the sort of signs I would look at and and want to see in order to say this is a worthwhile project to invest all my time and energy into. So that's where that, that's my motivation is I, I want the DAO to to be something that that enables the sandbox game and the sandbox community, the Sandfam. I'll do everything I can to build it up. So next slide is the scoreboard. So as of, uh, actually I should say as of today, as of August 25th, 2024, there is currently one SIP in draft on the forums. That's the NFT evolution, crafting, and NFT drops by Crypto Diplo. So I have, we just secured an interview with him on the books. It's going to be September 8th. So Sunday, September 8th, I'll be meeting with Crypto Diplo. And 
will be going over his sip. It's it's fairly straightforward. So if you watched my podcast 19 with Matt uh, with with Pickaxe and Sandow 18 with Pepe from Magic Palette, both of them commented on this and they they positively responded to it. So it reads pretty straightforward. There's some things I don't understand about it, but it's more technical. So I don't I realize I don't really have to understand all of it. Um just the fact that other people that I trust say that this is good for them as creators. I I buy that. So there's some questions, some normal analysis and investigation stuff I'd like to pursue with Crypto Diplo and and give Crypto Diplo the every opportunity to explain the rationale, the narrative, and the reason behind the SIP. So that's going to be coming up. Two SIPs open for voting. SIP number 11, which is a Sandbox Academy in the Philippines by ba- Mark Bago. And SIP 12, Sandbox Ambassador Program by the Sandbox team. That's the one we're going over today. SIP 12 and SIP 11 was Sandow. What was that? Sandow episode 12 was the interview with Mark Bago for the Sandbox Academy in the Philippines. I, oh, after speaking with Mark Bago, a very well spoken individual, has been in the Sandbox for. I think four or five years now and been running Sandbox Academy for about that long, teaching people box edit and game maker and onboarding them into the sand fam. So read it and please watch it and vote. I already made my intentions on that very clear. I support and I think it's a, a worthwhile effort, but please read it and vote it and decide for yourself. And let's take a look at where we sit right now. How do they stand? So SIP number... SIP number 11 right now. So it's the one we're about to go over. It is currently at 7.2 million voting points on yes and 512 voting points on no. So it's 92% yes. However, like the past three SIPs, that failed to get quorum and were ultimately not able to be accepted. Quorum right now is 7.7 million out of 30, which brings it to 25.8% quorum needed. That, let's see, when did it start? It started just four days ago, so it's not terrible. That's, that's not a terrible start. Um, and we'll get into this toward the end of, of all the yeses and nos after we've done our assessment. Let's take a quick peek at Sandbox SIP 10. So right now, SIP 10, which is, not that one, excuse me, SIP 12. There we go. SIP 12 is 4.4 million voting points on no and 3.9 million voting points on yes. So it's a 52% no and a 47% yes. Quorum is higher, actually, 8.3 million out of 30 million, so that's 27% quorum. And, okay, so it's about neck and neck on the no's and the yeses. And since I already did that one, let's take a look and see what's being said. Yes, I did my yes based on my, my Sandal 12 interview. With Mark, I support it. He's been doing this for years, paying it out of pocket himself, and this seems like a worthwhile investment for the DAO. What else? Let's see. I don't see a lot of explanations for no's. Here's punish.lens. Reason yes is punish loves this one. Okay. What else do we have going on here? This one voted no. The requested budget makes no sense. Higher spending on pieces than marketing, for example. Um, that's because uh, as as Mark said, that the pizza is to feed all 200 people who he's going to be teaching. So um, it doesn't have a lot of marketing because a lot of his connections are inside the Department of Education. So un- unless you're talking about like bribes or something, there's no need for like billboards or anything. They like you would go to the university, the Department of Education dean would send out an email to everyone or put up a uh, a flyer and then people would come as they as they would like to so there's there's no like online advertising in facebook or anything like that 
So you're spending more on pizza because you're feeding people versus spending money to get people when you don't need to in, in six or seven universities that he's going to go around to. But I, I understand. I, I get it. And that is all the, oh, there's a no with the explanation. Maybe create a better digital training program so it can be used around the world and not only focus on the Philippines. He lives in the Philippines, though. And if someone else want to do this and in, in elsewhere, then they could do that elsewhere. And as we did our podcast with Mark Bago, there were people like uh, Rocky's Miguel from Ecuador. Oh, he's in the chat. Hey, Rocky. What's up, Miguel? Como esta, mi amigo? So... Uh, Miguel said that he would love for it to come to the to Ecuador, and and Mark said, "Sure, let's um let's get together." So Mark is definitely open to, and that was one of my questions: was Are you open to it being elsewhere? And he said, "Absolutely," but he's only you know one person, and he runs this by himself. So if he gets the Dow money and that's proved successful, which he has every expectation that it would be, then he could easily export it to other universities around the world. But he lives in the Philippines, so. Yeah. And there's another yes, Ilias. Sandbox has grown all this time because of the communities around the world. It doesn't matter if you have a good product if you don't have followers. Yep, agreed. So that's where we sit on SIP number 12, which is run a Sandbox Academy in the Philippines. So let's go ahead and roll on back to the reason why we're here. The reason why we're here is SIP number 11, the ambassador program. So here's what we're going to do. So for this one, we're going to run it similar to what we did in Sandow 4, where we ran, we read through SIP 7 and 8. And oh, I forgot about the checkbook. Right, the checkbook didn't change because the last two SIPs did not pass. So we're still sitting at 13% spent, but 1.9 million sand. Uh, Dowbase.ai, I'm going to start showing that slide now. It currently shows that there are 1,808 voters within the Sandbox DAO and 211,000 token holders of SAND. Fascinating. I love DAOBase.ai and, and the metrics that it's showing. So definitely going to be... And we just, we just interviewed Mia Bao not long ago. She was uh, SANDAO episode 18. So she it co-founded DAOBase.ai. She's an advisory board member of the Sandbox DAO and really love the fact that that she is bringing data and analytics to over, I think it's uh, over 160,000 different DAOs of which the Sandbox is listed. So, cool. Let's switch our little thing around so that we can start doing what we need to be doing. Just talking through the SIP. All right. So SIP number 11, I'm just going to read it straight from the Sandbox DAO forum, uh, not forum, excuse me, the Sandbox DAO proposal. So it's sandboxdao.com slash proposal, and then you click on SIP 11, and then you will see what it is that I see. So if you want to follow along, I will read it, and then I will comment as I go through and note my observations in my second window here that, that we can talk about the analysis as we go through this. Okay. This may be... There we go. It's a little bit different. Did learn from Pepe's stream that I can just kind of move this window up and down as I need to. It was actually surprised even me. I didn't know. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So this works. This is going to work out just fine. All right. So the analysis. Start reading through it. So the council recommendation is positive, and as Seb explained and the forums explained, positive means that this, the special council believes that it will have a, a good impact on the way forward for the DAO if it were to be implemented. So here's the what. The Sandbox Ambassador Program is a collective of individuals who are tasked by the Sandbox to complete a set of functions that support the development and growth 
of the platform. As our platform and community continues to grow and evolve, so do our needs. In response, we're welcoming new ambassadors to help us support and contribute to the Sandbox ecosystem. Okay, strong opener. Not at all, not at all opposed to that. It, I, it's kind of big wording. So if you're not familiar with the Sandbox Ambassador Program, they are individuals who the Sandbox, they are volunteers, by the way, who have applied to be part of the Sandbox team. They are not Sandbox employees. So that was surprising to me for me to learn. Uh, so Vision X, Joseph, he is a, a Sandbox Ambassador. Uh, Monkey DeLuffy is one. Uncle Grumpy is one. Uh, who? Oh, I'm missing so many. There, there's a lot of different ambassadors. Uh, forgive me. Forgive me if I don't list you. Who is Monkey DeLuffy? I know I'm missing one that I talked to fairly. Oh, Candley Kristen. Duh. So Candley Kristen and Uncle Grump Grumpy were the first ambassadors I ever met in the Discord. And they were the, the landowner chat moderators there. And I learned a lot about Sandbox just by seeing them interact with people. So, uh, yeah, and because they're not Sandbox employees, they also are able to formulate their own opinion. And you're seeing that play out right now uh, if you're in the DAO discussion on the Sandbox Discord or you are in looking at Twitter where you can see some of those Sandbox ambassadors, they have some criticisms and uh, critiques of what they're seeing from the DAO. So the DAO is separate from the Sandbox and the Sandbox ambassadors are not employees of the Sandbox. So there's kind of like, there's a few degrees of separation going on there. But as you'll see later on, when I start reading the Q&A that I did with the, the few times that they responded to us on the forums, which were the SIP authors, you'll see that that's going to change. I, I asked that question about the, the degrees of separation and as you will see, it's going to change. So we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, okay, so that's the, the what. And what do the Sandbox ambassadors do? They facilitate, they enable, they support, they collaborate. They're streamers, they are Discord moderators, they're Twitch repliers, they're onboarders. They, they are people who the Sandbox has identified as good community members of the Sandfam, Sandfam being the Sandbox family. And uh, quick note on Sandfam, I didn't realize the history of that. And but Batman helped me understand that. Go West helped me expand expand on that. And in the last Sandbox episode, Sandow 19, 18, 17. Sandow 17 uh, with Pickaxe Bruno from Sandvam Cafe. We got into that conversation a bit and, and received the blessing from some of the people who helped push that term forward since it was first used in December of 2021. Uh, by, uh, I just was looking at that. Who used that? The first tweet we found by Bunga Collective in December of 2021. Bunga Collective tweeted out, keen to check it out, hashtag Sandfam. And ever since then, a month later, everyone started using Sandfam in January of 2022. So that was good. Um, that was cool. That was cool to see. Uh, we're trying to figure that out. And see, there it is right now. I'm showing it on screen here, December 2021. And it was in response to the Sandbox game who made a post in December 2021. Look how, look at that. That is just back in time right there. And, and then Bunka responded back with keen to check it out. So it feels like a lifetime ago in December 2021. I think that's when I joined too, it was December 2021. So anyways. Go back to the SIP. We just went through the what? Sandbox Ambassador Programs, collection of individuals. Why is this SIP needed? The Sandbox needs an ambassador program to help support the growth and development of the platform and ecosystem it serves. Ambassadors will play a critical role in raising awareness with new and existing audiences about key initiatives. Furthermore, this program will allow the Sandbox to incentivize and reward community members for their efforts in helping to push the platform forward. That's the why section. Uh, okay. Help support the growth and development of the platform. 
So let's uh, let's put some keywords right there. So the why here is to help support the growth and development of the platform and ecosystem. Okay, so that's, key, that's some key phrases there. And what else? They'll play a critical role, okay, with new and existing audiences about key initiatives. Key initiatives is something I keyed in on, no pun intended. Program will allow to incentivize and reward community members for their efforts. So that's another key phrase. So specific to the funding is to incentivize and to reward. What are they incentivizing and rewarding? We'll find out later. And how, by how much? You're about to find out in the how section. The how. The Sandbox Ambassador Program, SIP, which stands for Sandbox Improvement Proposal, the SIP, proposes allocating up to 400,000 sand. 400,000 sand. Okay. So let's see how much sand is trading at right now. Go look at the token. Is there some reason why they're not showing up? Token, sand. Here we go. Token tracker. So let's take a look. What are we trading at right now? Right now, we're trading at 29 cents. Okay. So let's do a little math. Calculator. So, what do we got? 400, 400,000 sand times 0.29 is, that can't be right. Oh, I put in 4 million. Let's say it cannot be over a million. There's no way. Four, so six, zero, uh, five zeros. There we go. Times point two nine. Uh, one hundred sixteen thousand dollars U.S. dollars. Okay, so they're proposing one hundred sixteen thousand U.S. dollars or four hundred thousand sand be allocated to cover costs for paying ambassadors in the program. We believe this approach to the budget will allow us the flexibility we need to scale the program over the coming months. That's a key phrase. Budget will fluctuate depending on the number of the ambassadors accepted in the program. I don't know what that means. Does that mean that it's going to go down if they don't hire as many people as they thought? I'm not sure. Current needs of the sandbox at this stage. Budget depends on the number of ambassadors involved. Oh, there we go. This budget will help pay for the expansion of the program, including more ambassadors to fulfill the roles and new tracks. In SIP details, you will see the four ambassador tracks. Okay, cool. So what did we learn from the how? We learned that 400,000 sand times zero point trading at 29 cents per sand as of 25 August 2024 equals 116,000 USD. Right? Yeah, 116. So that's the first thing we learned. The second thing we learned was this will allow us the flexibility we need to scale the program. So they're looking to add more people. Wasn't sure at first when I, when I first read this if they were just trying to beef up the current compensation, which I, as far as I understand and I've seen from the other ambassadors is very minimal. I don't know what minimal is. Maybe it's a thousand sand. Can't be a too much when they say very minimal so i thought that maybe this would go to them but it sounds like what they're trying to do is onboard more ambassadors over the coming months so the budget will fluctuate so it's going to go up and down i suppose uh, i assume up and down uh, up means they would have to come back for more but down means that they would be less than four hundred thousand sand in cost and they want to expand the program okay cool so that's good to know. And then it mentioned the four ambassador tracks. What are those? It says in SIP details, we will find out. So see SIP details. I realize you guys can't see what I'm typing right now. Here we go. See SIP details. I'll mark that one red so that I can know to come back to it later. Let 
so it's uh, paste without formatting and in sub details we will mark that red cool all right now the win the ambassador program has been launched on monday july 19th see the medium forum oh those are two different links so there's a medium article and probably a forum post yeah so there's a forum post embarrassingly enough i didn't know that the sandbox had a forum has it been out for a long time anybody know i didn't realize that and and i see it uses the same technology that the sandbox dow forum uses so whoops big time whoops so i did not know that <laughs> But let's look at this it's a medium article bringing together passionate individuals eager to help us support and grow the ecosystem okay we're thrilled to announce that we're relaunching the ambassador program this is the medium article i'm reading as our platform and community continues to grow and evolve so do our needs in response for welcoming new ambassadors help us support contribute to the sandbox ecosystem continue reading or learn more click here to apply i did apply to this so lanzer did apply and I applied for a number of positions. One was key opinion leader, I think, KOL. Um, there are a couple others that looked like I was suited for. Based on the answers that they gave in the chat, I'm still mulling it over. Still mulling it over. They, they gave some interesting answers that were different than what I expected in the very beginning of the... But what I heard other ambassadors explain explain was their role, uh, their role being not as employees. So, hmm, don't know, but we'll we'll see. We'll just keep on going as our analysis unfolds. Okay, become a part of something bigger. Talk about a community for everyone. More ways to contribute. Oh, there's the four tracks. Community manager. Content creator, key opinion leader, in-game leader. So I didn't do in-game leader because I'm in the sandbox game sometimes. I'm also, I build experiences, so I'm in game maker probably more than I'm in the actual sandbox game. But when there are events, uh, what was the last one I just did? Uh, Mochaverse. I just did the Mochaverse event. So I was in there for quite a bit doing that. Uh, Mocha run and, and all of that stuff. That was kind of fun. So community manager, content creator, and key opinion leader. I am both a content creator. I've been a community manager before for different places, different games. And then a key opinion leader, I suppose I am, talks about wielding influence within your community. For what it's worth in the community right now, I mean, sure. I, mean, I publish my content, so here I am. And rewarding work talks about ambassadors play a critical role. Doesn't really talk too much about what rewarding work it is. Oh, they're saying it's rewarding to be an ambassador because you play a crucial role supporting the platform. If interested, apply now. And then there, I'll put the apply link in the chat. So ambassador program application link. Boom. Go there. If you'd like to, hey, hodl. What's up? I am reviewing the latest SIP, which is the Ambassador Program. SIP number 11 is on the floating floor right now. It's at 92% yes, 6% no, but it hasn't even reached. I mean, it's at 20% quorum, so it has a long way to go before it reaches quorum. All right, so what did we learn about the win section? In the win section, we learned that there was a medium forum. Okay, so medium article. Right there. Talk some good stuff. Form article. Let's take a look at the form article. And it's uh, pretty short. Sweet and to the point. It looks like it's kind of a rehash. And then all my friends here, these people, they also created an account and were the SIP authors, but they are a collection of people. And when I found out, they're not ambassadors. So I confirmed that in the DAO discussion on the Discord. The ambassadors said that they had did not play a part in this SIP, so it must have been someone within the Sandbox team, not ambassadors, that that wrote all this up. So, cool. Okay. So, the TLDR section. And let's keep going. What do we have left? That is the end of the TLDR. So, there we go. TLDR. 
Let's go to the next slide. So now we want to go into the SIP details. And what did we learn in the SIP details? Right, let's go. Let's talk about the four ambassador tracks. Not talk about. Let's uh, list them because we did see it in the Medium article. So we already know the answer to that one. Uh, the four ambassador tracks are Community Manager, so CM, Content Creator, CC, Key Opinion Leader, KOL, and then N game leader igl yeah hodl you should definitely apply absolutely i apply too doesn't mean you're gonna get selected and if they offer to you doesn't mean you have to accept but it'd be nice see what it's all about we we are already kind of delved into it i mean you you are very active i think you should You could be a great ambassador. Okay, so we talked about all of that. Let's move on to the details. Denkoi, just to be clear. So Denkoi just posted the chat. Just to be clear, the ambassador articles in the corner was created in the staff channel, meaning that person, despite not having staff tag, has staff permissions in the creators forum. Uh, Danko, I don't think I fully understand what you mean. Would you mind um, would you mind expounding on that? Okay, let's get to SIP details. What's the first thing? Why does TSB need ambassadors? Great question. Why do we need ambassadors? So we need ambassadors because, reading from the SIP, the Sandbox is relaunching the Sandbox Ambassador Program in order to increase the number of ambassadors within the program. By introducing new roles to support the platform's ongoing growth. In support. In order to support the growth of this program, the Sandbox is seeking funding support from the DAO to compensate the ambassadors within the program. Initially, our ambassadors focused on community engagement through key channels like Discord by answering questions and helping users learn how to use tools like GameMaker and VoxEdit. Cool, okay. Now, in addition to those critical functions, ambassadors could be tasked with creating content for the Sandbox channels fostering a fun and engaging in-game environment with players and more. By expanding our program, we can partner with more of our community, bringing in fresh perspectives and diverse talents. Let's dive in how the new program works. Great idea, SIP author. Let's, uh, let's dive in. So one of these things caught my eye, and it was one of the questions I asked in the forum during the two-week public comment period, which was, uh, ambassadors could be tasked with creating content. So one of my questions was, is what does that mean? Does that mean that they have to? Or does that mean that that's like if they're in this content creator track, they would do it? Or, or what? Uh, and they, they gave some answers to that one. So let's keep going. Oh, all right. Let's, um, let's write down. What did we learn? They're relaunching. So I suppose they, by relaunch, they mean they have allowed it to return i guess they they had turned off the new applications until now so they're seeking funding to support we already know that focused initially our ambassadors focused on community engagement through key channels like discord by answering questions like i mentioned earlier chris candidly kristen and uncle grumpy and helping users learn how to use tools like game maker and Voxet. So that's a good one to know. So that is that was the original intent of the program. So they want to expand that now into whatever is next. Ambassadors could be tasked now, it says now, the new intent. Ambassadors could be tasked with creating content, fostering a fun, engaging in-game environment, and more. And more. So we'll we'll just highlight the most important parts there. Okay. What else? By experiencing a program, we can partner with more of our community. I don't know what that part means. Um, 
probably that probably what they mean there is that we we can engage more of the community, whereas it feel it they probably feel like they're spread thin, which is um, which I'm as a consumer as a gamer and all that I would I would probably agree with that. They already did a lot of fun engaging in game stuff though. I remember during seasons one and two and three, they would be doing. They would just uh, in in game people in game admins would show up to the new experiences that unlocked in zero zero sandbox map and they would do ad hoc contests like whoever could do the parkour uh jump all the way to the end block whoever got there first would win a prize so they frequently did that i remember trying very hard to win and then getting beat out by people who are better at it than i was okay what's next the sandbox ambassador program overview so we're in a new section of the SIP details. Okay. A community for everyone. So this looks like a like a it's like a mission statement. We'll see here in a second. So a sub subheader called a community for everyone. The sandbox. Oh wait, let me look at the chat. Dan Coy, you said reintroducing the Senate article in Creators Forum. So all my friends is from staff or a promotion permission to post there. So this SIP is a TSP SIP. Dan Coy, yes, that's correct. And you can tell when you look at Cyril's weekly post of the SIPs, one of the ones previous, it said Sandbox. So he shows what SIPs are coming up, and then are they by community or by the Sandbox? That sort of thing. Hoddle, you checked out the form earlier, and the first question was full name, and you just stopped there. Uh, true. Maybe just try putting your first name and see what happens. You know what I mean? It does take a little bit to go through, though. It, it took me, I don't know. It was longer than I thought. But that's probably because I tried to apply for three different tracks. So that's probably the reason. But yeah, just put, um, just put your first name and leave it there. If they don't like it, the worst they can do is just, you know, not ask you to join. But because you are who you are, they probably already know who you are. So maybe they don't need to know your full name right away. I don't know. Give it a shot. So a community for everyone. The Sandbox Ambassador Program brings together a diverse group of people connected by a love for gaming, having fun, forging meaningful connections, and of course, the Sandbox. It continues. The Sandbox Ambassadors have the opportunity to forge real, meaningful impact throughout our global community, from helping onboard new players to producing engaging content that inspires creators. Ambassadors foster a welcoming and inspirational environment for existing and new community members. Okay. I don't really see anything there that I need to really highlight or note. Let's keep going. More ways to contribute. Another sub-sub header. It explains. With this relaunch, we will be increasing the number of ambassadors and introducing new roles to support the platform's ongoing growth. This was probably answering what question I had earlier about the four tracks. Initially, our ambassadors focused on community management through Discord by answering questions and driving conversation. Oh, this is a copy and paste from the Medicom article. Now we will be expanding the coverage of Community Manager, CM, to additional channels as well as introducing three new tracks. Content Creator, CC. Endgame Leader, IGL and Key Opinion Leader, K-O-L. By expanding our program, we can partner with more of you, our passionate community, bringing in fresh perspectives and diverse talents. So let's uh, copy pasta over the new tracks. Cool, cool, cool. So we're done with this section. All right, next subheader or sub subheader is rewarding work. I really don't have much to say about the, what that section we just did. It, good new tracks, cool. Let's give it a shot. Hoddle, you guessed you KYC, so kind of the same. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Kind of the same. Rewarding work. Our ambassadors play a crucial role in supporting the sandbox platform and broader ecosystem all while being recognized by the community and rewarded in sand for their work. Okay. So I guess rewarded in sand for their work, maybe. Kind of 
just denotes that they're getting paid in sand. Okay. Goals of the program. Here we go. This ought to be good. The goal of the Sandbox Ambassador Program is to leverage members of the community to help push brand and business objectives forward. Oh. All right. So you start introducing words like brand, business objectives. You start you start bringing in, you start, um, what does it say? You start really indicating what it is they're going to be doing. Brand and business goals, objectives. So normally business objectives are profit motive or market penetration, market cap. Those are usual business objectives. Uh, daily active users, the DAU. Brand would be intellectual property. It would be uh, brand awareness. Also closely affiliated with market penetration, which is how how recognizable is your brand. Sandbox is very recognizable because it it Seb goes everywhere and talks about the sandbox all the time. So in the metaverse, the sandbox is very well known. It's just how big is the market cap? It's not huge, but as Seb says frequently, or he notes. It is a top 100 cryptocurrency and top 10 gaming token. So that speaks for itself. It's just in turn, if you start comparing it to say Roblox, uh, which is not blockchain enabled, by the way, but Roblox has many millions of people who play its games versus Sandbox, which has considerably less. So, uh, but this is starting to kind of specify that the ambassadors who we just learned will be paid some sort of mixture of 400,000 sand will be pushing brand and business objectives. So it's not just because business objectives and brand will transcend some of the, Hey, we're here for the community and we're here to foster in game stuff. Business objectives start talking about cost schedule and performance metrics for a company to survive and earn revenue. So that's, that's, that's a fascinating turn. So let's keep reading. A sub list of the business objectives and brand is acting on behalf of the business and fulfilling core job functions, i.e. customer support. Okay, that's normal. Distributing key information to the wider community in which they have influence. That is something I had a question on and that they clarified. What does, um, and what under what conditions would we, say we, would the ambassadors need to distribute key information? I got that one answered. Next bullet point was produce content for the sandbox and the sandbox DAO. I also had a question. Is that something that you would be compelled to do? Is that something that you would just do on your own? Um, I got that question answered. Next bullet is facilitate in live ops during platform events, which is the season. So next season four is coming up. So I imagine they would be participating quite heavily in that. To ensure players have an engaged populated server. So driving engagement. And what that means, if, you're, if you played, you, you normally run in to an experience, you play the quests, and then you log out. Because most of them up to this point have mostly been one-time use RPG-like games. It's a story, but the story doesn't change. It's, just, it's the story every time you log in. So once you play it through once, you really don't need to continue playing it because... The story you already know what the story is versus a mini game like uh, floor droppers like i do mini games mostly when i publish the sandbox which is repetitive you can play with parties and groups it's meant to be played over and over and it's got like a, a, a persistent game mechanic like in floor droppers you you run across a platform and you try and survive for as long as you can as the floor disappears underneath you block by block so that will just continually loop loop and loop and loop so in this, the ambassadors, the in-game leaders, I suppose, they are to facilitate during the season when season four opens again sometime later this year and ensure players have an engaged experience. So kind of what they've been doing, really. But I guess maybe more of them this time. I'm not sure. They seem like they did a pretty good job the first two seasons. Every time I logged on, they always seem to be there doing something whoever they were on TSB staff. All right, next section. Thus, the ambassador, Sandbox Ambassador Program allows us to 
Foster positive brand affinity and trust through community engagement. Communicate key brand messages more broadly and effectively to new and existing audiences and ensure optimal user experience. Hey, Sebga, what's up? Welcome. Below, you will see the four ambassador tracks. CM, community manager, tasked with interacting with the community on the sandbox social and community channels. CC, content creator, tasked with making, con making contact for the sandbox. Contact. Content. Tasked with making content for the sandbox to publish on our channels. Key opinion leader, KOL. Tasked with wielding influence within their communities by making and publishing content on their channels. In-game leader, IGL. Tasked with interacting and driving engagement within in-platform experiences. Okay. Cool. Good ex explanations. And so let's talk about... Well, let's just copy-paste them right in. I think we just do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So those are the goals of each of those new positions. Okay. It's currently just modifying uh, one of the future slides so that we can have this conversation later. Great. Let's roll back now to... All right, so the next section is who can apply? Who can apply? Let's find out. Anyone is welcome to apply and acceptance into the program is up to the sandbox's discretion based on number one, qualifications of the applicant. Number two, standing within standing within the sandbox community cannot violate terms of use etc number three needs of the sandbox team which can fluctuate depending on a variety of factors and then below it says however filling out this application does not represent any guarantee of becoming an ambassador of the sandbox and or receiving any form of compensation from the sandbox wait what if you Hold on, uh, let me reread that. Filling out this application does not represent any guarantee of becoming an ambassador of the sandbox and or receiving any form of compensation from the sandbox. Okay, because they said and or, now I've got to, I didn't realize it's the first time I read it. Now I've got to kind of pick it apart. So I think this is saying that even if you become a sandbox ambassador, you're not entitled to compensation. And I can say that with fair written amount of confidence because it says and or. If it had said and, so filling out this application does not represent any guarantee and receiving, then I'd be like, well, ah, okay. So what that's saying is just because you fill out a form doesn't mean you're going to get paid for it, doesn't mean you're going to become an ambassador. But because they said and or, they're kind of covering all their bases there. So if I become a sandbox ambassador, I might not be compensated for it. And you're requesting 400,000 sand. Okay. I did not. So my question there would be, under what conditions would someone who is accepted to be a sandbox ambassador not be compensated? All right. So that'll be a question that I'll be asking back in the forums. So, question. Uh, who can apply? So, let's first get that one underway here. Oops, I realize I'm not sharing. Okay, so who can apply? And my question here was, under what conditions... Would an accepted ambassador, uh, let's put a, a newly accepted ambassador, not receive compensation? Yeah, mark it red so I can remember to ask that 
question in the forums later. And Hoddle says, I think if they didn't do anything, payment was always based on participation. Oh, okay. That's if, if that's the reason why they put that there, then okay. Makes sense. But is that the reason why it's there? So I'll, I'll ask them anyways. But good, good point, Hoddle. That might be it. Okay. Let's keep going. Next section is benefit to the sandbox ecosystem. Now I've done, I've submitted four sips. As an aside, I've submitted four sips. Four? Five? All right, let me go count. How many have I submitted? I have submitted one, two, three, four, I have five. I submitted five sips to the Sandow, Sandow to the Sandbox DAO administration team. And I'm surprised at how short this is already, by the way, because my the, the input that I got back from the Sandbox DAO admin team had me filling out these sections a lot more than what I'm seeing here, especially the benefits here and the budget requested. So it just requests 400,000. I just finished a couple of days ago responding to a Sandbox admin sandbox DAO admin team comment where i had to itemize all of my expenses all of them itemize so i had to go down to uh, a very like i had to show how much that i wanted to pay a podcasting audio engineer you know like i would hire them through fiverr and i would pay i would get i would send them the file after i'm done with the podcast like this and then they would apply their stuff to it to a much more professional degree than I am right now. And then I had to, I had to end my SIP, I had to list out how much I was going to pay them. So this just gives one big old wrapped up number, 400,000. I tried doing that when I first uh, submitted this, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago almost? And um, a lot of the comments back and forth. Eventually, they're like, "We need more. We need we need more numbers behind this. We need to explain yourself a little more." So I did, but it seems like that's not the case here. They just put the full amount without any explanation of distribution, and that was one of the things that the community noted in the chat, uh, the DAO discussion, and in the in the um, forum post responses we're almost there this is we're pretty much almost at the end here of this sip proposal so benefit to the sandbox ecosystem what is the benefit we believe that the sandbox DAO should fund this program because number one shared and aligned goals the purpose of the ambassador program is to foster the development and growth of the community and platform which in turn impacts the sandbox DAO community Sure, sure. I, I don't disagree with that. That I wouldn't say that's a leap, but that's let's call that a, a an assumption. Let's call that an assumption. And only because the DAO is so new, we still don't know what we want out of it. But that might not be true in the future. I can I can think of some situations where the sandbox DAO community would evolve into where the growth and development of the community and the platform, while it does impact the DAO community, it's it's no longer aligned quite so A to B like it is here. Um, ApeCoin Chain and and Ape DAO, ApeCoin DAO is a good example of how the divergence between the Ape profile pictures and the the ApeCoin holders, and now all of the all of the initiatives and programs that have been funded. So like uh, there's like bagel apes. So like a bagel shop, there's laughing ape, which is like a comedy show. Some of those interests are diverging from what you would call the, the profile picture apes, the NFT people, and then even ape coin holders. So that's a fascinating thing to watch. And I'm, I'm in a couple different Twitter spaces a week where I can listen 
to how that unfolds so I can stay apprised of other DAOs and how they do things. Uh, I just got in touch with someone from City DAO, which is a, a, a metaverse, uh, it's, it's a DAO about how to on chain a city with like real estate. So I'm I'm looking forward to doing that interview here in the next few weeks um, to learn some lessons from them. And um, so yeah, that, that's that's interesting, but true for now. I, I'd agree with that. It's true for now. The second one is. Second benefit, community first, always. Many of the sandbox ambassadors are active members of the community. Very true. Candley Christian, Grumps, which is Uncle Grumpy, Michael DeLuffy, Michael, Monkey DeLuffy, and others. In some cases, the most active members, and should this SIP be approved, we can expand the program to welcome in even more members of our program. Big obvious question I didn't think about until now. What was stopping them from doing that now? Did they run out of budget? I, I, I find that hard to believe because Sandbox has a huge budget. A huge budget. And from what I understand, they're not paying the ambassadors very much. And the, the value that they're getting out of the ambassadors is far outweighing what, it, what it sounds like how much they're receiving in compensation. So... I think they did answer that though indirectly when I asked a question, and I'll I'll point that out when I when I read it. Uh, they they basically said that they feel it it should be the DAO that pays for the ambassador program now. So, but that that was a question that kind of pops up in my mind now again, which is, what stopped TSB from welcoming in even more members without this SIP? Right, that's a follow-up question to my follow-ups that I already have that I'm hoping all my friends will respond to. All my friends being the, the user that was tagged as the author, which seems like a, a collection of Sandbox team members. Okay, what's number three? Benefit number three. Creating more opportunities. By expanding our program, we are creating new roles and jobs for our community so that they can shape the present and future of the platform and get paid for their work. Okay. Budget requested. Always a fun one. We kind of already talked about this one. 400000 Okay. And let's just copy and paste it from the other one. We did our little math. All right, so 400,000 budget requested, trading at 29 cents per sand as of today equals 116,000 US dollars. Okay, no questions there, except um, how is compensation determined per ambassador? As you'll see in the next slide, when I pull together some comments from the community, that question was already asked. They haven't answered yet. They being the SIP authors. The exact number of ambassadors can't be determined at this moment. Okay. Um, why? Why don't you know? You know you want five, 400,000, right? So is that just a number you said? We want 400,000. Like, just because? Or why isn't this known? Or no, that's that's the wrong question. Let's say, what stops you from knowing this? Um, what causes you to not know this, I guess? But what cause, what about this does not allow you to project the exact number of ambassadors. All right, so that's my question. All right, implementation plan. Fascinating, fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm comparing in my brain all of the back and forth that's going on between 
our team, the MetaWorlds team, and on our five steps that we submitted, and the Sandbox DAO admin team, admin team, and we are we are being asked to provide a lot more information than what I've seen in these steps. Um, yeah, not not really a complaint, but it is an observation. I wonder why that is. So the TSP marketing team will manage directly relationships with ambassadors. Oh, that was a big question of mine. That was a big one. And that spawned its own podcast coming up. Podcast number 20, I think it is. Number 19? Maybe it's number 19. Um, which is the, the rules for Dow money. And so far, I've locked in Joseph as a guest on that one where we can talk that one. So what does it mean for the DAO to fund things? Should there be some sort of extra external relationship where the DAO doesn't have a say in the people that it funds? Don't know. But I got a very interesting answer from the ambassadors, from the OSIP authors when they responded in the DAO forums the past uh, during the public comment period. All right, so what's milestone number one for their implementation plan? Round one is selecting ambassadors, onboarding first set of ambassadors. How do we measure success? The number of individuals accepted in the program. What? So you measure success by onboarding some unknown number of individuals that are accepted in the program? It's very nonspecific. And now that, I'm, that I've been experiencing the specificity required by the Sandbox DAO admin team, that's definitely at odds with the level of specifics that they require of our team of MetaWorld SIPs. I'm having to project out exact numbers almost. And here they're explaining that it's just some number that they can't determine at this exact moment. Okay. So milestone number one is selecting ambassadors and onboarding them. Okay. Milestone number two. Oh, the completion date for milestone number one is from September onwards. Okay, so no specific when they're going to do it. And it unlocks a payment of 200000 So 50% of the 400000 sand. Milestone number two, reporting on first batch of ambassador work. Okay. How do we measure success? Sandbox team. The sandbox team, uh, the sandbox marketing team, will share with the DAO key metrics about the program. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Does it know what key metrics it wants to share, and it doesn't know, or it, it, it doesn't know because, and that's why it's saying it the way it's saying it right now. You'll share key metrics, like you you know what each role wants to do. You, you have them explained. So what key metrics? So like the content creator, what one key metric could be how much content are they producing? How many YouTube videos? How many hours watched is that? How many views did they get? Community manager could be how many messages were moderated, I guess? How many messages were posted by ambassadors? Key opinion leaders. I don't know. I don't know how... Uh, wielding influence, maybe that's how many likes that key opinion leader tweets get. End game leaders, which would be how many hours spent in the in the sandbox game, how many contests were run, and how many prizes were given. So there's some key metrics right there. But the how do we measure success is, you know, on second reading, it's I'm surprised that it says vague as it is, given the amount of, of specifics that the past few community SIPs have given that went to vote, and then the five that I have with the Sandbox DAO admin team. The completion date for milestone number two is end of 2024, and the payment in sand is to unlock the remaining 50%. Okay, so there's... There's no um, round three. It's just... It's just um, 
reporting the first batch. Okay. And and my question there would be, right? What key metrics? I might have already asked that one. I can't recall at this exact moment, but we'll find it, figure it out. Okay, and then the appendix, alternatives considered. The sandbox funds the ambassador program fully. Do you? Not with this 400,000 sand, you won't. And that's only a technicality because the sandbox DAO, sandbox DAO funds came from the sandbox, but once it went from the sandbox to the sandbox DAO, the DAO is a separate legal entity, so it's, it's now legally separated from the sandbox company. So the sandbox funds the ambassador program fully. We choose to not proceed with this option because we felt that since the ambassador program is tasked with fostering and growing the community, the DAO should fund the program. That is, that is a, that just warrants discussion. I don't necessarily disagree with that, I don't know how I feel about it right now. There's there's a lot of discussion and one of the one of the things that we will be talking about with the next podcast on the rules for Dow money that Joseph and I'll start discussing and anyone else he really wants to. It's just he's one of the people I thought of, so but ultimately yeah. I'll turn as considered. Okay. So that's the end of the SIP, the read through. I had some questions. So for this one, the appendix, which you all can't see, let me move that up so you can see. There we go. So for the appendix, it would be warrants, discussion. Is uh, around the DAO funding the sandbox functions? Responsibilities, I guess. I think it just needs discussing. Maybe I really don't have a problem with that. I just don't know what I think about it. There's, there's something about it that I... I need resolved in my brain. I don't know how to articulate it right now. So that's one of the reasons why I thought Joseph, he's like, Joseph's like the Aristotle of, <laughs> of the sandbox. Deep thinker. Uh, I appreciate listening to his thoughts when he talks about it and stuff. So that's the whole read through right there. Let's now go to the forums. Because on the forums, some healthy discussion was had. All right, so when they posted this on, definitely not January 29th, 19 days ago, on August 7th, when this was posted. All right, so let's look at the first response. Who was it? Was it me? Might have been me. That was me. <laughs> so they posted it 18 days ago, and a day later, I posted my questions. Um... Right, so discussion board link. So now we're over here. All right, so we're here. So here's now we start the discussion. So I had a list of questions after I read it. And I said, Hey, SIP Dow author team, we're it's very interesting SIP, and I, I thought it was. I think it's very interesting. Um, I'm happy to see that we're able to discuss this. I really like the idea, and there's more I need to know to form a voting decision. Would your team representatives be willing to come on the Sandow podcast to give your perspective and expand on the SIP? So it was 18 days ago, and they did not respond on to that. They just uh, answered my questions, and I asked a bunch of questions. Uh, everything from which budget would this come from? Can you give a full list of what creating content entails? What new roles were you thinking of introducing? Some of these things, I, I guess I just didn't 
fully comprehend or connect the dots because they did answer some of these questions already in the SIP. Um, and what else did I ask? Um, does this mean that ambassadors would have an employee, employer, or freelancer relationship with the sandbox? Is there ever a situation where ambassadors would be required to distribute specific key information? And I also asked a question for myself because I had submitted an ambassador application. I asked, if I were to be selected and accepted as a key opinion leader, what sort of wielding influence would be expected of me in other KOLs? Then I asked, what is the $400,000 400, SAND funding? The funding compensation, onboard fee, something else. I also asked, how many individuals total does 400000 allow you to accept? And then I asked, if the DAO ends up paying the 400000 does this mean that ambassadors would then answer to the DAO instead of the, the sandbox? That's where I said in, in the previous section that I didn't know what I thought of that part about the DAO of being tapped to fund this instead of the, the sandbox team and company. That, that was me trying to feel my way through. What is it that bugs me about that statement? I don't know. I don't fully yet know. That's what I'm hoping to explore in, in the next podcast with Joseph. All right, so I asked that question 18 days ago. And then later on that day, Geraldine, um, props to you, Geraldine. I love how active you are in, in participating from the Sandbox DAO team on the forums. Thank you very much for what you're doing there. Geraldine said, hey, Lancer, thanks for your questions. I already ans I can already assist to answer some of them as they are answering the SIP. Fair enough, Geraldine. Um, and then under the house section, which budget would this come from is what I asked. And it would be under the SAND initiative budget. So let's take a gander here at uh, in the slides here, the SAND initiative budget had 3.6 million SAND. All right, so that's how much of the 15.5 million sand is for sand initiatives. Let's look at the checkbook. How much is left? So as of right now, zero SIPs have taken from the sand initiatives. Um, the, the ones that would have didn't pass. So SIP 10, which was uh, the blockchain events in 2024, did not reach quorum. It only reached like 51% quorum. It would have... It would have uh, spent 337,000 sand. It did not make quorum, so it didn't. it's not going to deduct from the sand initiative. This one will take out, ooh, 400,000. I have that in the wrong place. Let's, let's go ahead and change that. So we want 400,000. We're going to change that 400,000 to over here, move that, and then should be good. Oh. Okay. Update it. There we go. All right, so we moved it over. Whoops, uh, looks like I accidentally got a zero. All right, so there's my... And let's do it one more time. There we go. So if this does take, then we'll have spent... Uh, we'll have spent... If these two SIPs pass, both of them are in Sand Initiatives column. So we'll have spent 453,000 of the 3.6 million Sand. So not, not, a, not a terrible dent in the budget. That's, that's doable. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Seems pretty reasonable. Oh, okay. I was, I had this all wrong. There we go. Fixed. Okay, cool. Um, so there, yeah, let's go back. 
discussion post. Oops. There we go. All right, and then under implementation section, when I asked what is the foreign funding, uh, Geraldine said compensation only for the ambassadors. Okay, fair enough. And then where I asked how many individuals does a 400K allow them to accept, and Geraldine said, as was noted, exact number of ambassadors can be determined. Fair enough. Okay. And then all my friends answered how many days after that? Six days. So a week later, all my friends answered my remaining questions. So where I asked, could I give a full list of what creating content entailed? They said... Content creation can vary based upon needs of the marketing team at the time, but typically will involve game capture, rendered scenes, box edit assets, or motion design work. Okay, so kind of like what, what Lucas and, forgive me, frequently co-host Lucas on the Sandbox Twitch and Cyber Dragon and, and Panda Pops, what they do right now. Okay, next part is under the goals and where I said acting on behalf of the business, does this mean that the ambassadors would have an employee-employer relationship? And they said ambassadors will have a contractual agreement with the sandbox based upon their agreed track and commitments. The contract auto-renews on a monthly basis. Okay. So have they answered anything so far that I asked new today? Take a look. Who can apply? Nope, no answer to that one yet. Next one was what stopped TSP from welcoming and even more members? They didn't ask that one. How's compensation determined? Didn't ask that answer that one. What about this does not allow you to project the exact number? Didn't answer. What key metrics? Didn't answer. Needs discussion? Did not answer. Okay, so we're still still good on the new questions. All right, the next one they answered for me was uh, when I asked. Is there ever a situation where ambassadors will be required to distribute specific key information? This is uh, what I said earlier. This is one of the key questions that popped out when I first read this. They said, yes, we may leverage ambassadors to distro or distribute information for a launch, i.e. game maker update, support a partnership launch, promote a SIP, and more. So with this new price tag, 400,000 SIP, 400,000 SAN that they will distro to un an unknown number of new ambassadors within an unknown distribution schedule. They will leverage this to, to require that ambassadors distribute information to include content creators. So if I were, I, the way I interpret this, if I were to be accepted as a content creator or a key opinion leader and I was doing standout podcast, I think what I'm hearing them say is that they would ask me to support a partnership launch. So they would, I would go to commercial break and it would be brought to you by finance. <laughs> finance is launching on X date. Tune in on X date at X time on the, the Binance website to see the launch of finance and then the rest of the pitch or any new partnerships that come about. Now the sandbox the sandbox has been pushing out a lot of new partners. I think they have over 80 at this point. 80 new partners. I say new 80 partners, some of which are big names like Forbes, The Walking Dead. What else? Atari. Big names, so they could uh, they they could request that their whole ambassador team read a prepared script or or pitch, or promote a sip, of which there are over twenty I think in the queue right now. That would be funny if I were to promote my own sip because I was required to by the by the sandbox team. That would be interesting, but yeah, that's what I gathered from this one. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm still mulling this one over. That's why I haven't voted yet. Under the four ambassador track sections. Oh, this was my selfish question. 
I, I asked, if I were to be selected and accepted as a KOL, what sort of wielding influence would be expected of me in other KOLs? They said, we are looking for KOLs who have a certain number of followers and demonstrate via engagement and other metrics that are engaging with their community. I'm not sure if they put the certain number of followers as a thing to say that we're not sure you're for us. I, I don't know. I read into it a little bit because the sandbox is not... Um, uh, while it's well known, it's not well trafficked, let's call it. But let's take a look here at Panda Pops, right? How many followers does Panda Pops has? She's been one of the main streamers. Panda Pops has oh 36,000 followers. All right, so I'll blow that up a little bit. All right, so she has 36,000 followers. How many do I have? I don't I don't even really really know. I have, <laughs> I have 523 followers. <laughs> so far less. So does that mean that um, uh, they didn't say what their bar was? How many do I have on Twitch? So uh, let's look. Let's look at Panda Pops. How many does she have? She has 1.9 thousand, uh, 1,900 followers on Twitch. All right, so let's look at myself. I'm live right now. <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on, just chill. Where's my follower count? 170? Really? Oh, 170 followers. Okay, so far less than her on every front. I wonder if I, I, I don't meet the definition of... Well, you know who else I should look at? Let's look at Crafter. He's not an ambassador, and so Panda Pops has enjoyed 367 followers. Okay, so I have half of Crafter, and let's look at uh, what was I looking at? Twitter, right? Or uh, X. X now. So was it Crafter? Yeah. How many followers do you have, Crafter? 4,465. So Crafter has quite a number of followers. So I would imagine that he, at least, he would make, uh, he would meet the bar there. Whoa. 34 views? Does that mean 34 people are watching? I can't. I'm looking at my broadcast on Twitter right now. Does 34 views mean 34 people is watching? That would be... I actually did not realize that was happening. I know I was using the multi-stream on the new stream labs, and... Let's uh, see. Okay, anyways. So, not sure what their bar is. They might not know themselves yet. Don't know. So, influencers will be expected to drive impressions, engagements across their posts, and in some cases, down funnel metrics. Down funnel metrics, i.e. traffic to the platform. I think, what, I think that's a wording to say that I would need to raid the sandbox game after i'm done with my podcast which i already do that anyways or maybe advocate for the sandbox twitch I'm not really sure okay then my last question was if the dow ends up paying the four hundred thousand, does it mean that the ambassadors would then answer to the dow instead of the tsb their answer was the program will be owned and operated by the sandbox this SIP is purely to fund the program as we believe this program delivers a similar mission as the DAO, which is to grow and foster the sandbox community. And and that didn't really that didn't really quench the thirst that I was looking for. And and what is it that I that I'm really bothered about? That statement under the appendix that said the sandbox used to fund the ambassador program fully, and they're looking to not proceed with that in the future because they believe the DAO also shares that responsibility, maybe. 
I guess it's because the sandbox is there as the sandbox game. The team is there to further the sandbox game. Right? And the DAO represents more than just the game. The DAO is, is not only the ecosystem, but everything about the sandbox and more. And the sandbox isn't just a game. It is how you interface. It's, it's the core product. But as we're seeing with 8Coin DAO, City DAO, Maker DAO, DAOs are becoming very creative in how they outreach, how they fulfill their purpose, how they build community. And maybe if we spend 400,000 sand, it will go to a sandbox company specific expense that the sandbox game should be picking up as part of their product. Don't I don't know. I'm I'm just thinking off the cuff here, but some things I'm going to have to go back on as I prepare for the next podcast with uh, Joseph where we discuss this in detail. I'm I'm still not quite sure what what my issue is with it. Okay, so then I say my response back on the forums a few days later was or one day later whatever it was was thank you and I, I again reiterate can the authors make themselves available for a sand out podcast and then oh i i ask i further ask is there ever a situation where ambassadors will be required to distribute key specific information oh no oh, no i'm just re- repeating myself so i can because I had a follow-on question. My follow-on question what, what to their yes that we may leverage them to distribute information is my follow-up question. What is your position on the conflict that may emerge between ambassadors on the key opinion leader track and the expectations that they push specific content? And then I quoted the Medium article where it talks about wielding influence by making and publishing content. And what I noted was that if I'm there as a key opinion leader, my key opinion leader role the wielding of influence in my community isn't based on my advocating, advocating, forced advocating of the sandbox game. It is based on my observations, my assessment, and my interaction with the community. Not that I am reading a script prepared by the sandbox marketing team that I am to then promote to my audience. So that that struck me as mm, fair enough that you're paying them, although we don't know how much. We don't know how many. Fair enough. And if you have a contractual agreement and that your contract states that, then okay. It still strikes me as don't I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It doesn't make me feel good. And probably because it's still that, that elusive thing I'm trying to think about is why is the DAO paying for it specifically? Okay. And then my next follow-up question was when they answered my question about um, does this mean TSB would answer or did the ambassadors answer to the DAO instead of TSB? They said they'll answer to TSB. And I said, what was the reasoning behind not including any tracks for the DAO ambassador? Yeah, I noticed that they didn't have an ambassador, a DAO ambassador track. Why not? I would love to be a DAO ambassador. The only reason I didn't go for community manager was because one, Crafter said he was going to go for it. And then Joseph also was going for it. Um, but but it was very heavily centric on on social media. And I did not feel like that was something I, I I wanted to divert my attention from podcasting for the Sandow and sit building for governance. I really wanted to focus on those two things and didn't want to spend my extra hours curating Twitter posts. As important as that is for that position. What I didn't realize is that this is actually a full-time position, not part-time. So if I had gotten it, then I would be doing it full-time like I'm doing full-time now as my program manager job. 
program managing software development. For uh, yeah, so interesting thing. But I'm glad, I'm glad they. Well, Joseph is no longer the ambassador right now. I think they're still trying to figure that out. The Al team is trying to figure out who's going to be the real ambassador, or uh, community manager. Excuse me, community manager. Okay, so they answered. Uh, that was eleven days ago, right? And then they didn't answer. So six days ago, on August 19th, I re again reiterated, can we do a podcast episode, please? Then candidly, Kristen, who is an ambassador right now, uh, four days ago, she comes in and articulates her reasoning for voting no. And, and candidly, Kristen has said many times since the beginning that she will continue to vote no until uh, the special counsel has someone from the community on it. Because she feels that the way it, it was introduced, the DAO she's talking about, the introduced, was improper. And I'm paraphrasing, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'm paraphrasing that correctly. So she said, currently there's still no one on those, uh, still no one on the special counsel and they have not done much to try and interact with the community outside of their AMAs, which they've already used. Okay, I'm going to skip over that part because I, I don't fully agree with everything she's saying here. But um, talked about how detached they are. Which is completely unacceptable, in her opinion. So she doesn't want to change her principles, even though her th this, this SIP fund, this ambassador SIP, would theoretically also benefit Kristen. So she's still voting no, even though. So I, I respect her greatly for that. What's up, Batman? Good to see you in chat. So currently it states there is no limit to the number of ambassadors. She said, so if they have 400 ambassadors, then that means each could be eligible for 1,000 sand until the rest of the year. And that's nowhere near enough for the work ambassadors do. Fascinating. Fascinating. Okay, she then said, I do not see anything spelling out how these funds will be distributed, and I feel like this is an important aspect of the proposal. So let's go ahead and go to our next slide here. So I already started putting some of this down. Distribu distribution schedule, the 400,000 SAN, is unknown, right? Expectations of the ambassadors is unknown. Reward eligibility of the ambassadors is unknown. Budget estimate of 200,000 sand being distributed to ambassadors for 200 months. So assuming 50 ambassadors would be $250 to $300 per month. Um, we'll only have four months budget left, assuming the same distribution schedule. That was something that someone who mapped it out showed. And uh, I don't think it was in this exact form, so I won't share who that was. I am okay... If the funds come from the Sandbox DAO, that was already decided when everyone voted for SIP1, but I don't like how they didn't specify at all how the funds will be allocated. I am voting 100% no. My views can be found here. So this, this was part of Candley Kristen's response. I think it was down here at the bottom. Uh, currently, I believe there are over 50 ambassadors and bringing on new ambassadors would combining... While combining the old would potentially would potentially 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 I shoot what happened. Oh limit each ambassador to five hundred thousand for the year based on this budget. Okay. So what I'm seeing is that this is not enough for for what it is that they are asked and would be asked to do. Okay. She says, there are many obvious questions that were not addressed and should have been. I will be voting no. And she explains elsewhere and, and on Twitter, X, that similar to what, what she posted here in the forum. Uh, some of the questions that she asked, is there a cap per ambassador that they can be awarded in a certain time? 
Will they be required to? Will they require work to actually be performed for these rewards? Are these sets amount per task? Would this only be for new ambassadors, or would old ambassadors be forced into this budget? Excellent question. Now that we know that to be compensated means you'd be compelled to do all this stuff, and right now the ambassadors seem like they have a, a wide degree of flexibility. But these new ambassadors, the way that all my friends responded in the, the first Q&A round, sounds like they would be far more restricted and controlled. Actually, let's just copy and paste her, her questions. So we're copying and pasting the questions that we just asked from Kristen. All right. Then, so from Lanzer, I asked. She asked a lot of questions, too. So that was good. Good questions. And then I asked, what was the reason behind not including the administrator. So I'll self-ID myself, but I won't self-ID other people unless they post publicly. And then I said, what's your position that may emerge on the conflict? Right. Right. And then what happens after that? Escape room artist. Love escape room artist. Thank you for frequently popping into the send out episodes. Escape Room responded to Kristen, saying he was proud of her for so standing up for her beliefs. Okay. Kunta MC. Oh, Kunta is also an ambassador. Awesome. Cool. So I, I did not list you earlier, Kunta, but thank you for being an ambassador. Kunta agreed that the SIP needs to be clearer about sand allocations. So where's the sand allocation one? Okay, so there there was a plus one by Kunta. Uh, let's just say plus one by another user. You raise good questions. We need to empower and incentivize. Look forward to learning more. High gaming hub responded to Kristen. This is exactly the feedback the Simbox team needs to hear. Talks about how the special members were chosen. They're not really part of the core boots on the ground community. They seem disconnected. A one payment fits all approach doesn't work here. Compensation should be based on hours worked or tasks completed, not a blanket payment, says High Gaming's hub. I'd suggest considering a senior ambassador or ambassador plus role for those who could be a part. Okay, so let's add that one to fund the community. Tracking time, people, and tasks will be crucial bringing this and a proven system. This isn't just a one-time SIP. It's recurring forever type of SIP. In the future, this could lead to demand for raises by these ambassadors and employees with any more complexity. Fair, true. Kendley Kristen then responds, this is a big one to me, even if I wasn't in the middle of my protest vote, which, which I said earlier, she was committed to voting no until a community member made, was able to join the special council. And she said, how can I vote when I have no idea how the sand will be spent? Oh, this is where she said, the if they decide to have just 40 ambassadors, that's 10,000 sand a year each. 400 ambassadors is one thousand sand so let's put that one here as part of the explanation okay Denkoy you were in the chat earlier Denkoy the framework of this DAO is the same as the framework of the creators forum in the creators forum we have an important public tool called users oh I like this one a lot Denkoy, I didn't know, like I said, I, I did not really know that there was a sandbox forum. 
that use the same discourse software as this DAO form does. But he's right. He showed the picture here. In the picture, you can go down and click, click users, and users allows you to monitor trans, uh, the number of posts that people make. So you can see Dan Coy has received 238 likes, has given out 305 likes. That's awesome. Always to see is that people giving out more likes than they receive. That's cool. Um, created 20 topics, replies, 7 posted, 57. Topics reviewed have been 145. And toasts read, 712. And then it goes all the way down. Pickaxe Master, who we just interviewed in podcast number 17. Escape Room Artist, Tache, Little Legion, V V Pyre, the Joan, the John Crow, PJ. Some of these are staff members, looks like, but I see a number of well known community members in there as well. So we don't have that option here. I've never seen that. Yeah, never seen that. But that's a pretty cool thing. So that'd be great if they could enable that. I I'm I'm willing to put money. I am probably <laughs> I'm probably the one that has posted the most because of how excited I am about the DAO. I'm just I constantly look at it. And I have the little phone app for Discourse, so I can see when new people post things. And I'm just I'm excited. So I'd love to to participate. But and as you'll see later on, that that brought me into some conflict with another forum post member. So I said that's cool, which definitely enabled Denkoy for sure. And then I just reiterated my questions, which they hadn't answered yet. That was four days ago. So August twenty second. So that the last time all my friends responded was uh, up 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 up. Last time they responded was August 13th. And and um, by my second follow-up to, to the questions I originally posed, August 12th. So almost almost a week later. Sebga, also in the in the chat. On Twitch here. Good to see you, Sebga. Indeed, Sebga says, the frequency and quality of the content is essential. Also note that an ambassador must act with a moral sense, by which I mean that ambassador cannot orient 50% of his or her content on play online, discover my experience. Completely agree. Conflict of interest type stuff going on there if, if an ambassador were to do that. However, if an ambassador wasn't paid, and was strictly a volunteer. Eh, is it really so wrong anymore? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know to what degree current ambassadors are given any sort of preferential anything. I don't really know. I'd, I'd love, I think I'd need to ask that question. But if they were being paid thousands of sand to do that job, then yeah, it could be a conflict of interest or an improper ac self promoting activity. For them to advocate for their own stuff using official resources. If they do it on their own, then, well, as far as the DAO is concerned, they're a private citizen. But if they somehow use the, the main Twitter X account to promote their own stuff exclusively, then, well, that, that would give them a leg up. Especially in th something like Builder's Challenge, where the more people who play your experience, the more you rank on the leaderboard so if th that could be a an, a very big abuse because people who get who get pushed to the the highlight reels on both the newsletter and on the website they tend to get a lot more plays yep amount equals time sebga says in the chat absolutely okay Yep, mentions match palette, game maker, box edit. Okay, so Candidly Kristen says, I completely agree to you, Sebga. And as someone who cares so deeply about the sandbox and the sand fam, 
I find it very difficult to support the current sandbox DAO. That's that's why when Kristen said earlier about her protest vote, she wants more representation from the community. So, uh, Kristen, if you're watching this, please come on the Sandbox Podcast. You don't have to sugarcoat anything. And if you want to make sure that you don't get yourself in trouble, then we can always keep it within the bounds of whatever it is you feel comfortable with. You don't, we don't have to talk about anything. Let's just talk. Cause I've, I feel like your perspective is one that so many people agree with and they, and they say that they say they agree with you and you are that they believe in what you're saying. And I would like, I would like there to be a podcast on this. I'd like people to hear your perspective in whatever way you're willing to share it. Okay. Then Deruth, the human comes in says as a brand new landowner and a lifetime creator I'm still getting the lay of the land it seems obvious that there needs to be more individuals working to the market working to market the sandbox find ways to fill the need for creators developing the creative tools to make the sandbox accessible to non-creatives expanding the sandbox to mobile creating more educational content and ideally some kind of director there seems to be a divide between the creators and investors as a nerdy, as a person who's nerdy and, and artistic, I hope to help bridge the gap. Okay, uh, he goes on further to say, "Sandbox is an investment opportunity. Sandbox is not a separate ent- the Sandbox DAO." Oh, oh, he says the Sand DAO is not a separate entity. No, 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 Deruth, I'm Sand DAO. This podcast is called Sand DAO. The Sandbox DAO is a separate entity. That's why he said that. I was wondering why and how he got that mixed up later on in his post. Okay, so Deruth, if you're, if you're watching this, the Sand DAO was me just smashing the word Sandbox and DAO together to create a name, Sand DAO. That's what I call the podcast. The Sandbox DAO Foundation is the company that runs the Sandbox DAO. They're the stewards of it. So I did not notice that in this post. It is one of the things I was waiting to see if this would be a full-blown NFT project and the sandbox delivered. The, the sandbox DAO is the most critical part of this project because it determines the longevity of the project. However, it isn't truly a decentralized autonomous organization if it is centralized by the council. I agree with that. I do agree with that. If there is a centralization by the council, then is it really a DAO? Well, if the, if the, the council is elected, similar to how ApeCoin DAO has governance working group that's elected and they help funnel and facilitate stuff. Well, that is that is a participative democracy. It's a, I guess reasonable people could disagree on the word decentralized, but it is organized and they have a leading body that is elected. And the constitution currently caps the number of people, the number of times you can reelect and to the, the council, I think it's four times, right? So if you, Constitution, let's take a look. So the Constitution, right, here it is, Constitution. Where is it? I think it's four. Four times? Ah, reelect. Members may reelect upon expiration. Pretty sure it's four times. All right, so maybe let's go with election. Nope. Um, there's a max. Oh, there it is. Members may be reelected, but may not serve more than three oh, consecutive terms. Consecutive being the key word there. So if you take a term off, which looks like it's annual, so you'd have to take it, it'd be, it's called a cool-off period. So if you have a year of cooling off after you served three in a row, then you can serve a fourth a year later. So two years. I didn't realize that the first time I read it. Good thing I'm reading it again. Let's find my way back. Okay, there we go. Okay, so Deruth talks about all that. It had a lot to say, and it was uh, 
It's cool reading that. Talks about organizing and stuff like that. And then I go back to what did I do here? Uh, just kind of. Oh, this is where this is where the podcast episode started to take hold for the next one, where I invited Kristen on as well as Joseph at the time. The, what I started asking, this was the appendix thing that was bothering me still. Should we accept that SIP funds go to creation of an employee relationship that doesn't answer to the DAO members? I've been mulling that one over. So that's, that's what I want to explore um, in, in the next podcast. Okay, and then Daruth talks. Then I talks about paying out of the sandbox fund. Then I, th again, yesterday, asked the, all my friends if we could do a podcast episode. And then, then DeRuth responds back and says, uh, expressing solidarity with Kristen. And we'll be voting no on any SIPs that are not for the purpose of developing the creator tools of the sandbox. And then, uh, then DeRuth and I have a, a little bit of a disagreement. And I, I won't need to, I'll just skip right through that. You all can read it if you really want to, but it's not it's not relevant to SIP number 11. So, yeah. But, Daruth, if you'd love to do a, a podcast interview, whether you interview me or I interviewing you, I would love to do that. So, that's it. That's where we stand on SIP number 11. Two hours in. I'm going to go ahead and cut it here in a second. but. That's that's where we sit. Sip number 11. There are still some questions. All my friends, we request your answer on this because right now you are you don't even have a half quorum yet, 50% quorum. And the last 3 sips were did not go through because they didn't reach quorum. So the the way things are looking right now, it's not looking good. There are a lot of even ambassadors saying that they voice their objections to this. So I think it's in your best interest to at least answer the questions on the forums. And if possible, please jump on podcast with me like the, the previous SIPs, SIP owners have done. And we'll, we'll just talk it out. Let's talk it out. That's, that's all we'll do. No, no traps, no gotchas. Just working through the questions and what the perspective is of the SIP owners uh, as you all wrote this. So let's go ahead and move on through the rest of the agenda. So that was our analysis. I'll post these questions as a follow-up in the forums, uh, the forum post. And then let's look at future episodes. So future episodes. That's, um... Nice. Not working. There we go. Oops. Okay, that's not what we want. One is for you to post. Paste that in. There we go. Cool. Future episodes. So we just we're about to finish SIP number eleven, Ambassador Program Review, which is podcast Sandow number eighteen, and nineteen is scheduled for September seventh, where we talk about rules of Dow money, and I, I'm still struggling with how to phrase this one. Maybe the chain, title will change, but with Joseph, who is also known as Vision X. And then a day later, we'll be interviewing what will become SIP number 13, which is the NFT crafting and drops SIP with Crypto Diplo. And that one is currently in the SIPs draft, which is the 14-day public comment period before it goes into SIP active, where the two SIPs awaiting vote currently sit. All right, Sandbox Spaces, Discord. So if you want to connect to the community, go to the Discord, the Sandbox Discord. There's a lot of conversations going on there. Go to the Sandbox DAO Forum Discord. Go to Twitter, hashtag SanFam, hashtag the Sandbox DAO, hashtag the Sandbox Game. There are also Twitter Spaces, I say X Twitter Spaces throughout the week. So Mochaverse Hall is on Monday. Bulls on the Block is on Saturdays. Coffee with Captain is Monday through Friday. That's at Chris Jordan, J-O-U-R-D-A-N. 
and uh, he does uh, that every day. That one's powered by ApeCoin, but they also will talk to, about the sandbox from time to time. Whale members on Tuesday, they have what's called Natively Digital, and that's at Whale members, one word. And then SanFam Cafe, we did that one, that podcast just uh, a few days ago, podcast number 17. And that was the SanFam Cafe, which is monthly done by Pickaxe Master. So thank you all for your time. And I'm going to raid someone. So awesome. Have a great day.